Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mayor. We're going to proceed with our budget work session. I know uh, everybody is uh, chomping at the bit to figure out some of these numbers, and I know that city staff is looking for some direction on some of these uh, outstanding uh, projects that we've been talking about and, and trying to come along, but I, I do want to go ahead and open it up for a discussion. I know. Uh, our city administrator gave us a memo outlining uh, some items that he uh, desires some direction on. So we could jump right in there, um, or if anyone wants to start off with any pronouncements, or we can dig right into the, the topics, the third <laughs> parking deck. Thumbs up, thumbs down, discussion. I, I can. I can't see a third parking deck in this year's budget. I can see a third parking deck, but I can't see it in this year's budget. I, I don't think we're ready for it, that's all. Uh, I could be wrong. So in terms of the five-year CIP plan, we want to, I would imagine it would be somewhere in that five-year. I think that's a different uh, story, yeah. You know, so I think we, I think what I'm sensing is that we want staff to continue working on that project but it would not be a capital expenditure that would be in the next state fiscal year i would concur I, uh, yeah i'd like to see it as a placeholder but i'd also like to see uh, again uh, some kind of indicator of private participation or, or uh, that we would be seeking that out or tie into other projects but mm -hmm. as a placeholder that doesn't have to be worked out but mm -hmm. i think it we should consider mentioning that in the CIP description and possibly in the funding source, although it'd be hard to do that at the moment. And continuing the conversations with the state, I think, is going to be important to get their buy-in on that project. Well, that would considering be considering the courts and the that would be well, and I think that would be participation. In right in if you could get them to commit to either leasing or a portion of capital costs, or or both, or both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say and that comes into play with the Trophy Building, and the building is directly next right. to the right. courthouse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, which I might add for any staff that are here that can do it. The, uh, the court people have been asking me, and I was negligent not taking care of it. Apparently, that building and the building next to it have not had their sidewalks taken care of and were very oh, icy. You're talking about shocky? Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. again, because of the parking situation, you have jurors and witnesses using those sidewalks to <clears throat> the circuit court. Mm -hmm. And I know the um, security staff, the sheriffs, were asking me to please see if we can get that taken care of. Other thoughts? Really nice to have a joint project with some of those buildings and a deck where the, you know, the, the reconstruction was part of the parking, you know. Well, I, I totally that agree would be a, a scenario that I think, a, and or you know, to, on this subject, uh, if we had to go to a, a district uh, revenue, I could see doing that with a parking district, but with an offset. If you invest in your building, or if you, if if you can do, uh, if people have already invested, if if it can be done legally, some kind of offset for investment or to reward near, near past investment, you know. I, I think that would be another way we could think about doing this. I think that if we don't include some uh, funding uh, in our CIP, and uh, in, in I wouldn't, I believe that that funding has to be in the CIP uh, at minimum in FY16. I think that if we uh, bring it up during our budget cycles and we don't identify funding for the project within our budget, we are not going to experience any movement by those buildings or those other entities um, in any foreseeable time frame. I think that if we were to place it within the CIP uh, for FY16, maybe span it over two or three years uh, or two years for construction, then I think you will see actual movement by those other parties that we know we want to share uh, an interest in that, that process. Uh, so, so for me, I, I no uh, that. that's what I heard around yeah. the table, something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Although again, I think with, with almost all these proposals, my, my feeling is that, uh, that I think that on the March 31st budget, I'd like to see 
the staff listen to us but propose a budget that they think is both CIP and operating budget that they think is the responsible way to go. The staff propose, we dispose. We'll, we would deal with it. So I think staff can hear us out, but I think on almost all of these things, I don't think we're ready to lock them in yet. Well, and, and I generally agree with Kristen on this. Um, it's a, money is the grease that makes the world go round. But in addition to that, a few weeks ago we did uh, we hired some people to look at uh, the economic development in downtown Hagerstown, and I, I really think that they need to uh, take that into consideration as they're developing their, their plan, and uh, I don't think we should be too anxious to get anything underway until we see what they have to say. But in terms of putting some money in the budget, that would, uh, that would move us along some, and uh, I think that'd be a good idea. Uh, Indeed, I noticed the next item is, is a million and a half dollars uh, for a downtown project funding. And, and I don't know, maybe the 500,000 could actually come from that, leaving the million for, for another project. So I think that has uh, some potential. The, the use of that money has some potential too. Just to clarify on the parking deck, as you thought of that, are you thinking of it entirely as a parking fund, revenue supported project, or are you thinking that we may include general fund sure. support? I think if you go back to the historical reference to the A&E deck, uh, which clearly was funded uh, in a different manner uh, overall than, than the North Potomac deck, um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, we set up uh, where you know, no more than 35% of the funds would come from general fund to sort of subsidize, you know, that uh, project. Uh, for me, uh, I think that that the question of, of you know, how it is funded uh, at this point isn't as important as including it in there to show that we are going to do it. And I put it in this context, you know, you look at projects, CIP, that are funded by the Board of County Commissioners, like the, the Robinwood Corridor or other items, and they're sort of, you know, prioritized, you know, the, and I don't see this any differently than that type of infrastructure related improvement project that addresses our desire to, to uh, um, uh, uh, encourage you know, growth to occur in concert with that infrastructure improvement. I mean, you, you wouldn't expand Robinwood if it wasn't to encourage that growth within those developed areas or undeveloped areas any more or less than we should when we look at a parking deck project to encourage growth to occur in those very buildings that we cite uh, and, and, and the, you know, uh, the other buildings around. Well, rather, you know, I'll say this, I'm not against, necessarily against putting a certain percentage in. I guess I'd like to see what kind of project we can come up with before I decide how much is funded by the general taxpayers. And, and, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree with 35%, but I would like to see Something coming from a tie-in project, something from the parking fund, and something from the general fund. And then I, if I found, had the first two, I could go with some amount of general fund, but without the first two, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. and, and the revenues aren't, you know, it's going to be hard put to pay, I'll bet, 50%. And I think the 35% was, <coughs> was a cap. I don't think right. we, we, yeah. we didn't come close yeah. to it, but I think that was the ceiling that you guys set when you approved yeah. the motion. Yeah, and in, you know, that, that's just the number being thrown out. To me, I think the important part is to get it within the CIP in a measurable time frame that we're looking at in context of this, this you know, budget uh, to say, you know, here is an infrastructure-related project we plan to move forward with that uh, allows those other parties that we encourage to be partners to say, you know, here is the time frame uh, and the framework in which it's, it, you know, we expect it to occur. Uh, we would like to move forward with it occurring. When is the A, uh, when's the A&E <coughs> parking deck going to be paid off? Does anybody know? I, I don't have I mean, that with the, me. The, the university parking it. deck is paid off. It, it was paid off uh, yeah, last so year. Last this year. Yeah. So the only cost we have is, is, is the infrastructure costs on that one and right. the regular costs. Oh, the, the, the debt and, service. And I'm sorry, that, what did you say? 
and some other miscellaneous improvements that we may have done. Right, we're supporting the debt service on the A&E deck with revenues from the decks as well as the lots and the meters. Correct. When does when's the A&E deck paid off? When For the A&E deck paid off? I'm not sure. I, I don't have those specific details on those. Okay. Um, but, individual debt structures with me and I have to bring that back. Well, Something you need to be aware of, Dawn, is within the parking fund, the surface lots subsidize the parking garage. Correct. So surface lots subsidize the debt service for the parking garages, right. that's how that is paid Well, off. as soon as the A&E deck's paid off, it can start subsidizing a third parking deck. And you know, one of the things that made Frederick successful was, was their initiative in building parking decks. And I, I, I really do think that Kristen is right, we've got to move in that direction. I mean, everybody seems to be pointed in the general, same general direction. Um, and um, we've got to move in that direction if we're going to uh, get people to come back in downtown, move back into downtown Hagerstown. Okay, well, that's helpful and we'll, we'll, we'll probably schedule it in for one year in terms of design and acquisition and then construction well, over see what our Following consultants years. come up with though and maybe they'll come up with a new angle that we haven't thought of the uh, million and a half for a downtown project is in this year's budget um, we have that in our, uh, in our budget for this year and we've identified several potential projects and uh, we need more discussion and clarification on that the um, Mayor, let me just say this. Sure. My thought is that probably the best project in terms of bringing people to downtown is the Maryland Theater. Uh, if, if the Maryland Theater uh, can be improved in a way that it becomes, that allows more social activity, mm -hmm. but then in addition to that, in a way that it brings more shows in, it will certainly benefit the restaurant, all the restaurants in downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I mean, I, off, right off the top of my head, I, th I think that's probably uh, my favorite project. In order and I know uh, we it. had to reschedule the presentation by uh, Benito. Lester, Gothorn, uh, our financial advisor. Well, right, but for the Maryland Theater, Theater specifically, uh, and I know they have a capital improvement plan for their 100th anniversary that I'm sure they'll be looking for city support on. I'm sure they um, I don't know if that will be in this fiscal year. I mean, right now, this money is, is earmarked for this, this current year. It is, um, with, a, with a future bond issue. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't issue the bond funding. If, you're, if you look mm -hmm. at the CIP page in your packet, it right. shows the 1.5. We, we haven't issued the bond funding for this project. The money's not in hand yet. Correct. We would still have the opportunity to do that mm -hmm. later this fiscal year. And depending on the type of contribution or depending on what project we would utilize, some may or may not qualify to be bond finance. So that's another consideration mm -hmm. to keep in mind. Yeah, our bond council would say you have to have a specific project. project. Mm -hmm. um, I see the Maryland Theater, which is not owned by the city or operated by the city, as a regional facility. And if, especially uh, if we're going to go to a large magnitude redevelopment, which it's something we should think about and envision and work towards. I, I think the other governmental entities, the county and possibly the state, uh, ought to be involved as well. I don't see how the city can fund what I think is necessary to do the right kind of job and do it right and do the whole thing at once. So you get, get people, oh wow, that place is great, let's go there. And then the other part about filling in uh, you know, the front area there, uh, that's a whole nother kettle of fish, you know, it, you know, how much revenue will come back, uh, how much is related to Barbara Ingram. I mean, that might, if, if we do that and some of it's related, it could even be a BOE tie-in. My, my, what I'm saying is there needs to be other entities to do a major I'm project sure. there, so and, and the private cost. sector as well. I, I think that, you know, and this was more the, the mayor's idea of the, this, you know, how we rolled out, if you will, the, the first third program. You know, I, I feel that that sort of million and a half that we took to do that was, in, in my mind, a good model to address a number of initiatives that we believe are important for improvement to the city, and especially the core, um, in, in a manner that, that 
helped a number of things along. For me, I just envisioned this 1.5 million, which I think was sort of a replacement for that, as sort of the, this, this arbitrary set aside at the moment. And for me, I like the approach, whether it's the Maryland Theater, BISFA, you know, Grand Pan, whatever, private or, or you know, quasi nonprofit, you know, commercial type uh, um, improvement. Uh, my preference is that we continue uh, as we are able to do so in that framework rather than this, you know, here's 1.5 million that, that may be used for something at some point um, in some amount. Well, the bond line, if it's bond financed, we have to identify a specific project or projects. We, which again is why I prefer the approach that we've taken with the first third program where it, where it capitalizes a specific amount with funding limitations from us as, as an entity toward the efforts of other pu public and priv private um, um, participation for improvement. And, and to me, you know, wh while I certainly un understand the, the approach to the Maryland Theater is a good candidate for that, uh, for me, I look at that and say, well, you know, if the Maryland Theater is putting up X amount through its efforts, that type of program, that type of first third program could be a, uh, um, an assistance to that, not a, a, a catalyst uh, of funding. Uh, for that, and that, that's, that, that I think is, is more in line with, with Marty's approach of, you know, what is the level of responsibility that we share toward any given project, and what is the, the fiscal capability we have uh, as it applies to, to the fiscal benefit that we receive right. uh, from it. But, but you think, we still think it's a good idea to put, set aside a general amount we don't, for our own internal budgeting purposes, we don't have to identify a project. We can put money right. and debt service in there, which was just what you're, you know, you're alluding to. But, and then you spin it off to specific projects as, as necessary when you go about issuing the bonds. But we, we don't have that money literally, we just budgeted for it. That's right. And, and we, we probably won't spend it in 2014, FY14, but, uh, you know, I think the council's in agreement from what I hear with moving that out to FY15, conveniently moving the debt service to FY16, but you know. So it's uh, because staff is asking whether we wish to keep this project in the, in the proposed budget. I'm hearing there's a consensus that yes, we want to keep this amount for downtown project, but it likely won't be this project or project. Right, right. Right. Plural, I think, right. is the right word. Right, I, I just, I'm not aware and of any specific right project yeah, that that I would, uh, um, right. you know, agree to say here's here's a, a lump sum of 1.5 million toward. I, I like, I like the proposal again, Mayor, that I think you largely put forward, which I think we're seeing some success from. Which is, you know, you put up 150 and here's 50 toward that. You put up 750 and here's 250 toward that. I, I just to 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 assume on a non-city specific, any non-city specific project that, that we can absorb, you know, the, the lion's share of the cost of any project, mm -hmm. I, I don't think is the best way to expend the limited resources uh, that, that we, you know, can, can identify for, for those purposes. And one, and once again, the Urban Partners Project may identify something for well, Aaron Council to consider yeah. on this. See, see, well, we Which I think is... Right. I mean, right. if there are, uh, I think, I see what they recommend. Uh, Mr. Alshire mentioned when we were talking about first thirds about infrastructure improvements that help the catalyst projects move forward uh, or, or uh, will incentivize the private investment. Right. I think those are the kinds of yeah, things. I think the Maryland well, Theater was an example that, mm -hmm. that Council Well, I mean, I know a lot of people. And, and I, but, but that's what I agree that, that we ought to consider it a portion and a portion of that funding, not, a, not the whole thing. Well, and I think a, a lot of folks complain about the city's regulations and standards, you know, for uh, building codes and whatnot. And the first third, the way I look at it is it's a way of saying, okay, yes, we do have high standards and we, we want developers or redevelopers to, you know, jump over a higher bar, but we're, we're here willing to be a partner and willing to help achieve that goal so that we can get some of the private investment back into these properties downtown. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the one, one thing about the Maryland Theater Project is it has the potential for helping the School for the Arts uh, as well as the downtown restaurants and other social activities. So I think that's very important. I mean, it's likely that the school board will move forward at some point on the Bowman Building beside the School for the Arts. And um, that being the case, there probably ought to be some coordination mm -hmm. on that project. Uh, can we just clarify, too, on downtown projects, and we didn't mention it in the body of the memo, but the Massey project, at this point, you want staff just to sit tight on that? It's property owned by the county. Is there any, any expectation on the Marin Council's part at this point that we do anything I, more? You know, I, I think we need to move forward on the Massey project. Fact is, and you're talking about the 195 or the well, reimbursement. Uh, just for in the, general, mm -hmm. you know, we had the historic trust out here in September. Well, we've got to pay the 193 back. From time to time, it comes up about should the city get involved in some way. Um, just wasn't sure if there was any any expectation in terms of the CIP or the budget. Ooh, those those buildings over there are just incredibly ugly. They degrade our town. And they need to come down. Are you talking about opinion. Ma including Massey in that, Don? Or I am. You're talking about really, three I buildings, really am. right? I'm talking about all three. I, I'm not against it, uh, but, but we don't own them. And again, talking about participation, I don't think it's on our back. I think maybe, maybe we'll chip in. But to, for us to pay off that CDBG obligation, which we wouldn't have to do unless, as I understand it, that building comes down. Is that right? Um, which just ourselves kind of uh, all the buildings right um then you know uh, um, i i think at the minimum needs to be a partnership with the county who's the owner you know and right now we haven't heard from the county that they have any plans no no right? no formal proposals i mean uh county administrators inquired if there was an interest in our part well, well, he was well, aware we of a formal written request with a request from a written response from the county government what exactly of, our role of what of what they plan on doing with those yeah. buildings and what they think blight. our role to be and yeah what yeah. they think our role to be yeah. this is a blight and i've heard from at least one or two county commissioners for a long time that they plan on doing something about this i remember when i made the comments when we took the tour of the library it seemed to be a whole lot of really great we're going to do something but the silence is deafening, and uh, you know we talk about quality of life in neighborhoods, and these buildings have just continuously torn down the quality of life in that neighborhood, and, it, and now it, it adjoins our new library, and I think something needs to be done, and we need to ask the county for where they're at with this. And it sounds like there's a willingness to be partners with the county on moving forward with the transformation of these properties, but the ball truly is in their court if they own I, I, I think, number one, the historic trust, as I recall, when we went through there, informally said that they, they thought the one, one of those houses, believe it or not, was really inter, interesting and they worse houses have been renovated. The other one, didn't matter and Massey they were willing to see come down that's the way I recall it correct and uh, with a little persuasion maybe all three would come down if that's what we want uh, and, and there's a plan for the reuse of the site right you know rather than just sitting there at one time there was going to be another improved entrance where that alley was to, to the library facility yeah. but the county said that they couldn't tear the Massey building down because of the historic trust which is not what the historic not what I heard from them. So that's, you know, getting back to, to what Lou said, I think we need to say, what are your plans? I, a, a couple of county commissioners have said, why don't you just take the Massey building? But to me, that's a little bit like the old briar patch, you know? It's like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. So unless we have a very specific plan and a very specific user and, you know, to pay the renovation costs, but see, I, I like historic, but I don't think the Massey building's historic. Or the so, I've heard, so I've heard, let's make a written request to the county and ask for a written response for what the plan is I for this property a good idea. and what potential yeah. role the city might have in partnering with moving yeah, that but property. Yeah, but it's not at some open-ended offer. It's right. just like, what would you, 
Yeah, but if they come back and say, look, the cost to, for, for demolition and repayments, you know, 250000 city, would you like to kick in one hundred twenty-five grand? We at least know then mm -hmm. right. formally what number we should right. be plugging into well, our budget. And I don't see anybody at this table balking at, you know, 125000 in the grand scheme of the budget to improve the condition. But that 195 is lurking out right there, and that yeah, we need is. to that's make that. That's the key. The, I, I think we, that ought to be a shared thing, too, because that is the key to unlocking what we do. And I think that's it. Should, should At some be point, I recall though. when I was on the planning commission and the plans for the new library came through, that the county had a plan to sell that property along Baltimore Street for private that enterprise. That whole stretch there was going to be a banana. Oh, excuse me, was going to be a resale to help pay for right. the library. But right. I, I, I don't know. That's what I recall. Yes, I, I think so. you're right, Dave. I, yeah, that was going to fit right, right in with all the development there that the hospital was doing. We, we discussed it, uh, alternate entries, if the Massey building could come down, which wasn't known at the time, and, and all that. Remember when we looked at site sure. plans for that parking lot? Well, and, you know, Marty used the perfect word on these buildings. They're a blight. They're a blight to a library that people just paid $24 million, including us, to build. They're a blight to the other side of the street. They're a blight to the, the church, to, to, to the synagogue. Uh, I mean, we, need, we do need to move forward. Uh, they're not going to get any better. They're just going to fall down. So we'll move forward with, uh, I'll work with Bruce on communicating with the county and uh, trying to get some clear direction and response from them on that. OK, good. It'll be a step in the right direction. And the way yeah. I understand it, we're going to move item number two, as Marty suggested, because it is simply a sure. placeholder on a paper. You're going to move that one year forward. That's what I heard, and that was my note. That was my understanding. Mm -hmm. Item number three is the acquisition of two fire department ladder trucks. Yeah, maybe good to have Chief Dietrich come up and join us at the sure. table. We've got two, our two frontline ladder trucks, our 1998 models. In the current year's budget, we have them in the CIP for replacement. Uh, ladder truck number one, Pioneer Hook and Ladder, 2014. Ladder truck four, Western Enterprise, the following year. It's a little bit tough that we have two, two ladder trucks purchased at the same time, so the replacement comes due at the same time. They're major purchases. We've got 900000 in the CIP for ladder truck one, 950 for ladder truck uh, four, it, with some assumptions on volunteer company support. And uh, you might recall in the current year, we also bought uh, engine one, uh, with the assumption that there'd be 300,000 in city uh, funding support. We'd like to clarify that in a few minutes. And 150 in volunteer company support for that fire engine. So maybe what we should do, I, I don't know, Michelle, if you want to get, or kid, uh, want to provide an update in terms of the, the volunteer support on engine one, and we can clarify getting that funding from, because we've already ordered uh, engine one. It's here. It's, it's here. Okay. And paid for. And, okay. and we, we need to pay for it now. <laughs> uh, so if we could tackle that one and then tackle the ladder trucks. Sure, engine one is here. And I think we just paid the final payment at the point that you picked up maybe just a couple weeks ago, two weeks About ago. About a month ago. And um, we touched base with the volunteer company. We had originally, as, or in our assumptions with that, had um, anticipated that the $150,000 contribution would be a one-time payment up front. And we've now been approached with... Um, some alternative options for repayment to us because they're not going to be able to do that within one lump sum or within one year. So we'll be back once we know a little bit more details. I just um, went through some officer changes, I believe, at the end of last month. So we're hoping to retouch base and we'll come back with updated information on that. So then, they're still talking 150. Over a different schedule. Hopefully. Probably that over about a three year span. Correct. Yeah. So, what does that say about the assumption of 200,000 towards the, I guess, 900, 900 to 950,000 
I think uh, 200 is probably uh, a little optimistic. I've talked to uh, the presidents of both companies, and I think they're thinking more along the line of 150 apiece. And we should clarify that those numbers came from us as preliminary projections. Yes, the they CIP. did. They didn't represent commitments from the volunteer companies. <laughs> right. But, but it changes the, the, the amount we're, we're talking about to about, For the let's say, 800,000 each. I guess uh, my, my question to the chief would be, is, is one of the trucks in better condition than the other? Is there, can we stagger the purchases effectively so we're not, we're not laying out you know, close to again. $2 million in, in for, for those items in, in one year? Well, because of their age, uh, they're both becoming more and more expensive to, to operate and maintain. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to staggering the purchases of them, especially if we could keep the one we're taking out of service initially as a backup. I think we could probably stretch it out a couple more years for at least one of them. Has, has, have there been any recent uh, major work done on, on one of the trucks? Yes, yes, the one that's been out of service since April. Right. And hopefully we'll have it back in service this week. Right. It's, it's very nearly finished. So it's had some refurbishing. We could get some mileage out of that refurbishing. Yes. But at one point this year, both were out. Both One were for out. a short time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So but, but if we buy one new one, we would have that. And if we, yeah, right now we don't have a backup truck, right. ladder truck. So we used to back, I guess, before 98, kid, correct. is that correct to say it that correct. way? We operate with two frontline ladder trucks and a backup. When we bought these two, we eliminated the, the reserve. Mm -hmm. What the chief is suggesting is one way of pushing back the purchase of the second ladder truck would be to keep one, one as well, a reserve. I, I guess I would, in the March budget, like to hear from staff whether that's cost efficient or not. I can't sit here and say whether it is. I, I don't know. But if we could stagger them without and keep it cost effective, I don't want to do it just to it just does seem do like if we buy them at the same effect. time, we're just going to come to the same situation however many years from now and we have to right. Well, but, but we, we've got to watch our bond capacity. By, you know, we, we Again, in March, we'll know more what, what that is, but you load too much into one year. And, and these aren't small items, and it's going to be more than the 750 each. It's going to be at least that we have to finance up front. Is it okay to move forward with the one at this point, yeah, planning sure. on, the, on the replacement of ladder to. truck one? Yes. Well, and you could put it in the CIP for both, just stagger. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah, we push ladder truck four but, back. But, but again, if it's cost effective, I don't, if you guys come and say, well, this is, you guys made us do this, it's more expensive, I don't want to hear that either. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I'd like to hear more in, in the budget at least. You know. If, if we were to refurbish a truck so that it would last another year or two, what would the cost of that be? Well, typically, uh, you don't really look at a total refurbishment unless you're going to plan on keeping the vehicle for an extended amount of time, say five to ten more years. Um, so I don't think either one of these ladder trucks are good candidates for that. Uh, now, putting enough into it to keep it going is a little different. Well, um, the one you just put money into though. Right? Well, we rebuilt the entire fifth wheel assembly in it and did yeah. some other minor repairs, but um, that would fall far short of a total refurbishment. But that would be the one most likely you'd keep in service, yes. got lower mileage and everything? Yes, correct. Yeah. So they, they have done some, Don, some refurbishment. Do they both have the same, roughly the same number of hours on them? Uh, no, no. Uh, Biner Oak and Ladder would have more. That truck's seen a lot more service. And the other one's the one that's been out of service for the last several months. So that would be the one I would probably replace last if we're going to stagger well, the purchases. That process is probably at least worth looking at anyhow. Any other thoughts on that? Comments? So you have listed here um, the, the first truck listed is included in the FY14 acquisition, right? Correct. And then we were going to do the, the second one in FY15, right? Yes. And what I'm hearing is we're going to keep the one in the FY14, mm -hmm. and we are going to look at the second one 
being moved to FY 16 or 17. That's that's a scenario we could explore With and come back to. I, I just ask them to explore yeah. the scenario and see if it's cost effective. I think it's important. I think it's important to try to move forward in FY14 with, right. with, with one, with one right. ladder truck, yeah, which I, is all that we were planning on doing. Right. I think everybody's well, nodding year. to that one. Yeah. It's it's the second one moving that to to like I said two years out. We get more information. and We can make a decision. Right. Yeah. Or they can recommend it yeah, in the budget and decision. look at what our bond requirements are. You're always looking at what your bond requirements are year by year, and you got to weigh what you do. At the same time, you got to weigh what your total costs are, maintenance and all that. Right, we could, we had, and as you point out, it looks like the uh, cost of these things is going up by about fifty thousand a year. <laughs> we yeah. see about a three to six percent increase annually hmm. in, no, in price of apparatus. But, he, but he's talking about the volunteer contribution being less. That's what Don's talking about. I think. Isn't that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking yeah. about the cost of the trucks. Well, yeah, they go up too. The cost of the truck goes up, and, and yeah, uh, what so. we can expect that's not city funding goes down. So, so it goes up two ways. Anything else on the ladder trucks? You guys okay with the direction on? The yeah, that's helpful. On on the on the engine, can we just confirm? We we talked about in November the engine one that we've already had delivered using uh, FY13 surplus. For that instead of bond financing that lowers I'm our fine with that. our yeah. our bond issue yes, lowers our debt service <clears throat> so if that's okay then michelle will go ahead and reflect our numbers that way so chief Kid, what would happen if we told you not to pay for it Kids. <laughs> well, i've already paid sure. for it he well, had to have i'll a call up the bank <laughs> I don't think we have much of an option. <laughs> Chief, I just, I just want to make the public clear on one issue. The trucks that we have now, until we get new deliveries, will serve us adequately, correct? I can't uh, promise you they're not going to break down once in a while, but other than that, yes. And if, and if they shouldn't, you have access to other trucks, right? Other communities, we other do. fire companies come we're in still using and provide those, that equipment if we're, necessary. We're still using a loaner right now. So everybody's safe. Correct. In that regard. Well, we are in the process of getting ready to mount all the equipment on it now, and then we'll have to train everybody. So it's probably going to be a couple months. Thank you. You're welcome. Next up is the uh, the old 625. Yeah, That's this one, a little bit different issue. It is. Here we're asking, uh, just to clarify, this is the proceeds from the sale of the Army Reserve in the current year, and where the money sits right now is in the property management fund. We discussed uh, about a year ago when, when the purchase was approved that the money would be used towards one-time projects. So once again, as we're thinking about the CIP, uh, just wanted to check in with the council to see if there was any preference at this point in terms of us plugging it into a CIP project, whether you wish it to remain in property management for a future allocation, but we don't have it allocated towards a project right now. We had talked about having it as a, uh, earmarked towards many MELP I mean, that, acquisition or improvements. It's been yeah. MELP, it's been downtown. I mean, those are the two ideas we've heard, I think. Yeah, the only one for them. me is MELP. I, mean, I just, I will reiterate over and over that for me that's one of the top five priorities uh, of this body is to, to remove that building. Uh, and so for me, you know, this is clearly money that, that you know, didn't exist and that is clearly the, the to me, the, the best candidate well, I, th I mean, personally, I think it's good to keep this set aside for if and when Correct. we go to court and a jury decides that it might actually be worth something that we have to pay for, that we have that money on hand to make something happen right away as soon as we acquire that property, as opposed to waiting for a bond approval or something like that. And it won't hurt. Well, I, I would say leave it to the property management fund, and you can designate it for MELP as a holding action, and then if mm -hmm. that doesn't transform it, the money's still there. Right. right. Is everyone agree in agreement with that? It won't hurt to have it there as, as we're doing 
our, our planning proposal, the new planning proposal, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it gives you some options. I mean, right. you know, nice, nice flexibility there. All right. Any other discussion on that item? Moving right along, the use of the FY13 general fund surplus. I know uh, Councilmember Brubaker had some questions that he's been working uh, offline, if you will, with, with Michelle. And, uh, and I think you've answered a couple of them already. I mean, you've, you've identified the, the engine mm -hmm. as being an eligible purchase. We'll, we'll hold on the Massey property right now. Um, you know, and then I think with MELP and possibly the additional of the police vehicles are their placeholders for the future. We, we, we aren't here with specific timelines or projects for those. There may be other uses that come up uh, in the future where you wish to use some of this money. But uh, it helps a lot to know that we can use the 346 on the, the engine and the battalion vehicle. So aside from, aside from the items uh, identified, if my math is, is right, you're looking somewhere between eight and nine hundred k. Right. Before this three hundred and forty-six thousand, we are just right at one point one when I came downstairs today, and that's pending any any audit or changes. They're actually reviewing several things for us right now. Um, so we should know within the next, we should know by the end of the calendar year if there are any other changes. But this is still preliminarily, I mean, so 1.1 1 .1 minus the 346. Once again, I, I mean, there's already some items that we've done that we sort of had to do. And, and those are to help us catch up for the past four or five years, some of these things. But I, I'd rather not spend this money until we know what the results of labor contracts are. I know it's a one-time thing, but it does carry forward and to the extent we use it now, we don't have it available to fund next year's budget. Uh, it does have a rippling impact to spend it all now just because we appear to have it. And um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work with Michelle on, on the number, but it's not something I'm gonna get into here. So, uh, you know, I. I'd rather not spend it. Uh, we spent part of it, but I'd rather not spend the whole, and assume the whole thing. Exactly. Considering all the stuff that's up in the air. And again, if, what's FY14 going to be? What's, the, right. where, what's our estimate for FY14, plus or minus? That'll be in the March 31st budget. Staff when, will do a good job of, of saying uh, you know, where, the, where they think we're going to come out. And I that, do know Michelle has mentioned that you turn it. That's a it, it is highly likely we will not have a surplus like this at the end of this fiscal year because well, of the better estimation of the speed camera revenue. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, that's always been what yeah. was the uncertainty, I think. Yeah, with that. so, uh, well, all the more reason. I, mm -hmm. I, I'd rather not spend it. Or then if, if it remains available either to help fund next year and smooth out a transition for other expenditures we have to make and or do some one-time things I, I, I don't think we should be deciding that now would be that would be my view at at minimum I would assume we would generally agree on two items at this point one is that it would be folly to roll this into operational right. costs um, ongoing costs uh, such as compensation and things like that the second is that it would not be uh, rolled into the reserve the way that that surplus may typically occur. Oh, I would agree with those. That. Well, if if we don't designate it, mm -hmm. it will, Roll by definition, reserve. be unreserved fund balance. That, and that, that's that's the second point I'm trying to clarify. Well, we can designate it. We just have to do it before the end of this fiscal year, right? Or yeah. if, if, you know, we come back in a couple of months and we decide that we, you know, something comes along like here's, here's a one-time project that we want to use fund balance for. And, and I guess here's my point, and I realize we have the flexibility to, to, to you know, navigate around uh, the, those reserve limitations. 
but the reality is 750k is three pennies on the tax rate uh, and, and could serve to address those one-time expenses that we would uh, um, foresee in some type of, of FY15 uh, expense related to our ability to afford that. And so what I don't want to occur, or at least some clarity on, is that by not designating it, it gets rolled into the reserve. When it gets rolled in the reserve, then we, we are presented with a financial picture to say, well, your potential tax rate increase is X amount when we just pocketed, if you will, 750,000 of the taxpayer's money that could have been used to, to decrease that, that, that potential uh, um, uh, tax rate adjustment. That, that's what I want to make sure that we have the flexibility to, to preclude from happening. And so by definition, what will occur, we're closing our fiscal year um, books, everything's with the auditors, it, it will. We're, we're not committing it, we're not designated, we're not making it, we're not, you know, taking any action that would do anything else with it. So we've ended the year, we've ended with a surplus, even if we end it with a deficit that rolls into the unreserved. So as we are preparing the fiscal year 15 budget, we certainly, I mean, we're not hampered or hindered we can utilize with right. CIP projects. We can say instead of doing, you know, a transfer from the general fund out of operations that year that we want to do a one-time transfer from fund balance reserve and actually budget it that way. But, but by doing it in that manner means we put it into fund balance reserve and then we go right. get it out of fund balance reserve. And I, I'm not a fan of that uh, because one of two things occurs. We, we are presented with a budget that shows some type of potential tax increase mm -hmm while we're putting money back that, that before the end of this fiscal year could have been presented toward diminishing that, 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 um, that, that uh, proposed uh, increase. Which is, I think, the reason that we were bringing this to your right. attention I, and, and presenting different options and because otherwise I'm we not, don't, we I'm don't have an option. I'm not in favor of the option of, of it goes into the fund balance reserve at the end of the fiscal year only for oh. us to, to debate pulling it back out or not reflecting it as accurately as we may be able to before the end of the fiscal year in addressing any budgetary shortfall that may uh, be presented to us when we receive the budget in March. But th this is FY13 surplus, so by definition it's going to be fund balance. Fund balance. Mm -hmm. What staff can do is again say, okay, here's some FY14 items that this like we can use it for paygo but but you know I'd, I'd like to see it uh, uh, be things that would save money for the following year um, FY15 mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to come out of reserve because it's 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 what the books are going to show by Correct. staff's Definitely. estimate and, and the auditor's estimate for FY13 um, so it will come out of that that reserve, but what we can do is is spend some for PAYGO in FY14 or spend an additional amount of PAYGO in FY15, either one. It works the same way as far as I'm concerned. Um, but FY14 would be fine, but I would, again, like to see everything together. I like to see, you know, the whole budget and, and here's the way uh, staff recommends and we can change that around if we want to rather than spend it now. And again, you know, once it's in fund balance, going back to our policy, once it's in fund balance, it can be utilized and we can certainly use our fund balance reserves, but it's for one-time projects, yeah. mm -hmm. capital improvement projects, okay. not recurring operational type of expenditures. All right. Any other questions or comments on that particular item, surplus? The uh, last item on the memo was the uh, CDBG budget information update. It's not looking pretty on that front. Is that right? Ask, ask John to come forward if he would please. And just this is just informational at this point. Um, as you know, the federal funding has dwindled over the years. We mentioned that in the memo, but uh, Congress is working on a budget this week. So yes, and Congress? no wonder it's been well, snowing. Well, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> 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 And um, we, we had um, an email come out from the, the central HUD office for us, our rep 
uh, sent an email um, yesterday. And uh, it says that we don't know anything really. Uh, in terms of what staff are doing, uh, we're going to project a 10% cut. Uh, that's what we did last year, and uh, we, we were conservative. We ended up getting more funds than we anticipated. So uh, our entitlement in the current year is 660, approximately 660,000. Uh, we're going to put together our budget based on 600, and, um, and we just want to be uh, conservative. Um, even though the the House has passed uh, a budget bill, the Senate, I believe, is working to pass a budget bill. Uh, none of the appropriation committees have gotten together. So just because a budget bill is being passed, it doesn't say how much is going to what agency. And uh, we anticipate it's going to be a number of months before before we have uh, solid numbers. Um, this year, it wasn't until June that we had numbers. Which um, I think was the first, maybe the first time after we received that information after Marion Council budget adoption. Correct. But we used and to get it much earlier. Historically, we would get a pretty good number uh, in December or January. Uh, so uh, we're going forward with the presumption we're not going to have a solid number and we just want to be conservative in our projections. The Senate, the Senate took a preliminary vote today, this morning. And it was a substantial vote. It's, a, it's pretty certain it's going to pass this week. Yes, and, th and then the real work begins with the, appro the appropriations committees uh, to, to determine what agencies get funded at what levels. All right. Thank you. Just so, John, one, one more thing. Is there uh, anything you suspect that will be, you'll be asking to be supplanted by the general fund, or will it be something we can trim from the CDBG budget? Um, we, we're not anticipating making any uh, significant request. Uh, we, we are working on some proposed projects, and, uh, but, but not supplanting in, in, in the traditional sense uh, for what we typically fund. Well, and I think that's important, at least for me, to see is a couple of things. Number one is uh, since these declines of, of with your current estimate of nearly 400,000, I think it is in, important for us to, to at least for me as a, as a new council member, to see what we have absorbed of that $400,000 decrease. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and for me, sort of being able to wrap myself around the first real budget review, uh, determining wh whether I agree with those things that we have absorbed into the general fund. Um, so, so for me, I think that's one thing I would like to see. In other and words, then, what's been cut out of that 400000 Well, not what's been cut, but, but to me it doesn't matter so much what's been cut as it is if you got a million four years ago and you got 600000 expected next year, and during that, that period has the city absorbed X number of dollars worth of those previously, uh, um, you know, federally funded uh, uh, obligations, uh, you know, what are those items? Uh, because for me, I may not agree with those items that, that, that we, uh, you know, as a city have determined uh, to absorb. Or, and, and I think in general, we can say it was a combination of cuts and some transfers to the general fund. Yes, we, we, it, it, it was the majority of cuts. We wanted to maintain our neighborhood focus and some of our community revitalization efforts thinking those were pretty vital to us so we did transfer some to the general fund we can't answer the question how much and the details of that there were also cuts we've got fewer staff involved in that operation as well but we do know what we're spending general fund money on now that we weren't previously yes we can go back and compare year to year I mean, one example is HNDP, right? I mean, we moved that from CD yep. to general yes. fund. That is one example. Yeah. Um, Just as an example. Uh, and I think also, as Marty pointed out, I'd be interested to see, you know, what exactly we plan to absorb, if anything. Uh, you know, it, it, this it's probably proposed just scaling back. Sixty thousand uh, dollar decrease. Yeah, it, it's just scaling back uh, in terms of uh, the projects we're able to carry out. Uh, I, I can say that that's what we've done, uh, that's what we did last year and the year before. Um, uh, we, we went into it recognizing that the entitlement would be less and, uh, and we, we scaled back on projects. 
Uh, we have looked for alternative funding sources, so we're still able to deliver uh, uh, to the community. So. Always better to be conservative. So uh, yes, it, 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 it's a nice surprise uh, when, when the feds say, hey, here's an extra 60000 Yeah. Any other questions on CDBG? All right, thank you. Thank you all very much. Anything else related to the budget? I think Marty kind of said, go ahead, Chris. Uh, go ahead, finish. I have one. I'm just saying I I was just going to say, I think Marty's point about, you know, sort of, letting the staff take the ball and run with it and put together their budget uh, in the next few months, uh, presenting us with it uh, when they do in March and then letting us have at it. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on the, the process moving forward, but that kind of seems like where we're at. We beat this, uh, this budget to death, looking, looking all these corners of City Hall for pots of money that uh, we might be able to find and uh, you know I still continue to think that we need to look at if we're looking at downtown projects we need to look at financing districts or, or you know supposedly the state delegation told us we have the authority to create these, uh, these uh, tax districts so maybe we can uh, explore some of that as well but uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Alshar go ahead. I, I was just going to note there are two items uh, the, and the first, I guess, relates to this evening, is we were presented some months back with the quote-unquote sort of bad debts uh, that we have uh, on the business side. Uh, and I think there, if I recall, there was some neighborhood, it was either 300000 or 600000 I can't remember the number at the moment. But we have carried those for some time. And as I said then and would reiterate now, I think that we need to have a plan going forward uh, on uh, what we are going to do to sort of write those things down over time. I mean, some of them just aren't getting paid back, and, and there's no point in, in pretending, you know, in that vein that, that we, we can carry them indefinitely and say, oh, this is, you know, money owed. At some point, we just got to say, okay, there are going to be losses we absorb for, for you know, bad investments that didn't work out uh, that, that were made. And, and, and program them into budgets over a number of years to, you know, to, to absorb that you know, quote unquote loss or, or you know, uh, carrying. And then the second, uh, I guess, speak to the, to the mayor's point, you know, I feel like we, we've certainly taken some time to review the revenue side and, and this evening we certainly, I think, gave staff some good direction on the CIP side of things, um, but, but we, we have not had uh, discussion on the uh, expense side, so I'm not certain whether we're, we're going to simply wait for that for the budget cycle or we're going to have some discussion to that effect uh, before we get there. Any, any other thoughts on that from the council? Well, that's not inconsistent with what Marty suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, I think his plan's a good plan. Okay. Anything else for the good of the cause for this budget work session? So we'll go ahead, as we've done in the past, prepare a proposed budget, have it uh, by code ready for you by March 31st. Certainly, I'm sure. We'll give you snapshots along. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just give us updates. We, we yeah. try to feed you stuff a, a lot during the work sessions. I mean, January 7th, uh, Mike will be back on the five-year rate study. Uh, we postponed that last week, and then Les Guthorn's coming in your first work session in January. Those are two important chunks of the budget, um, and I think it'll be helpful to have Les, Les meet with the mayor and council. So we'll, we'll keep doing that, bringing issues in like that. Well, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, staff. And uh, we'll be adjourned until 7 o'clock when we have our regular session. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's a uh, wonderful time of the year, and we're going to get this meeting started. Uh, the first thing we'll do is have an invocation and then uh, followed by the pledge to the flag. So if, if you can, please stand with me.
can. Let us pray that strength and courage be abundantly given to all who work for the world of reason and understanding, that the good that lies in every heart may day by day be magnified, that all will come to see more clearly not that which divides us, but that which unites us, that the blessing of peace be ours, the peace to build and grow, to live in harmony and sympathy with others, and to plan for the future with confidence. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Standard announcements, the rules of procedure uh, were adopted on September 24th, 2013. A use of cell phones during meetings is restricted. All correspondence for distribution to elected officials should be provided to the city clerk and should include a copy for the city clerk for inclusion in the official record. Our meeting schedule next month, the new year, uh, we will have work sessions on the 7th, 14th, and 21st of January at 4 p.m. And we'll have our regular session at 7 p.m. on January 28th. And at this point, I'd like to introduce, we have uh, several guests with us here tonight. Uh, first, I would like to recognize the members of the U Utility Relief Fair Committee. And so I'm going to ask Beth Everhart, who works in our customer service department, to come up with the members of the committee. Come on up. We have uh, some certificates of special recognition here. Sure. If everyone just wants to sure. line up here and when I call your name, if you wouldn't mind uh, taking this certificate. I want to thank Beth for all the hard work she does working in customer service. Uh, I know that everyone down there on the first floor does their best to address everyone's concerns and issues in the most timely manner, and uh, we thank her for her service to the citizens. Uh, James, I'm sorry, Jim Marshall. Thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Thank Thanks. Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> Pastor Ed Heim. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. And Cindy Brown. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And Liz Church Liz is not, not with us. Thank you, Liz. We appreciate her service. Sharon Hawkins. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Pastor Robert Pettis? Pettis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Donna Rose also could not be with us tonight. We appreciate Donna. And last but certainly not least, Ms. Carolyn Brooks. Thank you very much. And I think, do we want to do a group photo for, for Facebook and posterity? <laughs> You're going to tell us where to line up, right? If I could ask, um, the first three to step up on the first step, the top step, and then the remaining three. Of course. So if you haven't liked the City of Hagerstown Facebook page yet. Can we be your friend? Absolutely. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you all for your service. Appreciate it. Well, I didn't have too much to say. Yeah. I already did. Did you? Okay. I would like to say thank you to all. It was a quick job that had to get done and Beth actually remembered that there was still money that was left in the relief fund from three years ago so I do thank you very much and we are going forward then in trying to get now another relief going so hopefully we'll have it up and running in March. Thank you. 
Thank Thanks you. Thanks again. Thank you. At this time, we want to recognize all of the participants in the City College. Uh, this is a program that's been around for a while. Uh, these folks have spent the last year, I believe, uh, they started back in January, that's right, uh, learning about all the different roles of city government, uh, getting to meet with each department, uh, and finding out what they do here in the city, and uh, getting a first-hand look at what goes on here in City Hall and throughout the city. So at this point, I want to invite all of the uh, members of the Hagerstown City College to come forward. I know they had their graduation, I think, earlier tonight. Uh, we just want you to come up and be recognized. And we also do, want to do a group photo, of course. Thanks again. Sure, thank you. <coughs> and did you all pass the test? <laughs> Was there a summative exam at the end? We promise, promise I won't make anyone give a speech. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Thanks for being here. Oh, okay. And I know there were several members of the class who couldn't be here with us tonight, uh, but we do thank you for your interest and your participation in this program. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> and John, do you want to talk about the next class and how people can find out more about yes, it? Uh, they can uh, just monitor our website at uh, Department of Community Economic Development. And uh, we hopefully uh, have a website that's going to be available for Hub City Channel 25 and also uh, our Facebook page. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, and last but not <coughs> least for guests uh, tonight, uh, we want to recognize, uh, give a special recognition to our distinguished city attorney, John Erner. Uh, this will be his last uh, meeting with us here tonight and um, the roasting has already been done, so <laughs> Uh, we're just going to be nice to him tonight, and uh, if John, if you would like to come forward, and I know you have uh, your son Hammond and your grandson Zachary here, maybe they would like to come forward as well and be a part of this. So you're not going to mention the Giants? Nope, we're not going to talk about the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of like watching ESPN. <laughs> That's right. First of all, because we can't think of any other use for this. We're going <laughs> to give you your, your nameplate to take with you as a, a keepsake of your, uh, your fun times here at City Hall. Uh, but I would like to read this uh, certificate of special recognition on behalf of the entire City Council. Uh, this is a special recognition for John Erner for 16 years of service to the City of Hagerstown. Whereas John Erner began serving as Hagerstown City Attorney in 1997, and whereas John Erner has provided legal advice and assistance to the mayor and council and city staff on many important issues, including zoning, annexation, land use, utility management, and many other areas of city operations, and whereas Mr. Erner's work, expertise, and dedication as city attorney has made Hagerstown a better community and strengthened Hagerstown's city government, and whereas John has served the city for 16 years with integrity and distinction, and he will be retiring as city attorney effective December 31st, 2013. Now therefore I, Dave Geisberts, the mayor of the city of Hagerstown, Maryland, do hereby express on behalf of the city council and city staff our sincere appreciation to John Erner for his service to the city of Hagerstown. We extend our best wishes upon his retirement and for his continued success in life's pursuits. Thank you, Thank sir. You very much. Thank you. 
We will let you give a speech. Well, um, I don't have a speech planned, but I, I am appreciative of receiving this. I came in tonight and wondered where it was. And <laughs> didn't exactly know where I was supposed to sit. But uh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll put this on my desk at home. Well, we certainly appreciate your service. Just in my short time getting to know you as city attorney, I always know that you're uh, completely honest and straightforward, and well, thank uh, you. we really appreciate your service thank to the city. You. I'd um, want to thank you and uh, the council for this. A uh, special little thank you to uh, Lou and Bruce Zimmerman, who uh, go back 16 years to an administration that uh, to decided that uh, they would try their hand with uh, attorneys from our firm. I'd like to thank uh, Mark Boyer and uh, Bill Nairn, uh, my partners in, in this uh, 16 years adventure. And I know they're going to continue on as city attorneys and uh, do a wonderful job for you. Um, I want to thank the staff. Uh, employees that I've worked with over the years. Uh, all of them have been uh, wonderful to work with and uh, it's been a great thrill and a great pleasure to serve the city for uh, 16 years. Um, and uh, I'm appreciative of what, you, what you've done to recognize me. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, let's get a picture of John with the council and the mayor. Can we do that? Sure. I think that's appropriate to get a group picture. And you too, Bruce. <clears throat> Donna? No? <laughs> In front of him? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little worrisome. <laughs> Offensive line here. If I can have you both come down here. Oh, well, now this is making it better. Oh, it's going to make it better. Okay. Can you one person over here? One dollar. One dollar. There we go. You're part of the honor era. Oh, I'm the even or the leveler then, right? Yeah. Nah. Everyone take a step to your left. Okay. To your left. Step this way. One more to the left. Everybody? Yeah. All right. Right here on the count of three. One, two, three. You're going to take another one? Bruce, you can take a small step. Do what? Step closer. Step closer. All right, on three. One, two, three. And one for Facebook. She's the only one that orders you around, isn't she, Bruce? I was going to say. <laughs> well, there's a few others. On three. One, two. Perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank Thanks you. So First much. time I've ever heard perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I thank think you. you're way too young to retire. But. Well, thank you. Thank you. <gasps> Yeah, we got that right. Don't tell anybody. Appreciate all of our guests tonight. The next item on the agenda is citizen comments. I have two folks who've signed up. We're going to start with the first person on the list, and that is Mary Haynes. Mary, come on up. And let me just remind everybody that citizen comments are limited to five minutes per individual. Meetings are televised and recorded. Uh, your comments will be on air and on tape and on YouTube. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm um, sorry to have to follow all that pleasant stuff up with the discussion of gang turf wars, but uh, we've got one going on out in our neck of the woods, so I thought I'd come and uh, share the details of it with you. But first, I've got a pet gripe that I have unloaded on everybody I could think of, so I might as well unload it on you guys tonight. There is a building on Jonathan Street. I think its number is 49. I get to sit in traffic twice a, day, twice a week 
coming from Cumberland Valley vets, <clears throat> looking at the glass gone out of the windows, the blind slats all askew, whatever window coverings there are for the other places. It's just a jumble of a hash of mess. And you put it together with that building you've got on the corner that used to be a hotel, and you've got the beginnings of Skid Row, a block from the square in the downtown. I just thought I'd let you know about that. The next thing is the graffiti turf war that we've got going on. Maybe it stopped. I have no idea. Nobody shares anything with citizens. But it was going on for a good couple months, and then it burst on the scene with a competition between the Dark Crips and the MS-13 on the back wall of the only property I know of on the east side of Oak Hill Avenue that has sold for more than half a million dollars. $525,000 worth of property with a graffiti turf war going on in its back wall. I put the photographs on everybody's desk. Now, those photographs also include graffiti from the back wall of the stables on Mulberry Street, <clears throat> which face Broadway, a corner which I have been told by reliable people, heavily into gangs and drugs and since there's this one residential multi-residential uh, building prostitution wonderful we've got elements of what appeared on their walls on our walls behind potomac avenue thank god not yet behind laurel but just on the leg around the corner from my garage is where all of this stuff is really big time i do not know the dollar sign is ubiquitous. All of the elements, um, it is an element that is shared by all of the graffiti that is around Dewey, um, McKee, oh, I don't know, Potomac Avenue, East Irwin. We've got a boat sitting down on Cypress that has ST and something else on it. I do not, it's not an S. It's a dollar sign kind of thing with a line through it. I don't know what that indicates. I'm not into uh, the graffiti. I have not looked it up on the internet, though I understand there is a couple of glossaries on the internet for this stuff. I'm not about to do that. I'm not an investigator. I'm simply reporting what I've seen. This is Mulberry. Now, Mr. Chaucer used this language back in the late 1300s. It means exactly today what it meant for him and the great Bath wife of Bath. The language that you can understand means what the language says. But the part that scares me is the part that you do not understand, and neither do I. This bit right up in here, that's the dark crypts. Answered by, ladies and gentlemen, the MS-13. I think that's the prettiest blue-green for one of the ugliest group of people on the planet. The MS-13 are out for blood. Whenever you see them, you are in trouble. Now, I've been told, oh well, these are just wannabes. These are middle school kids. They're more dangerous than the adults that have been actually um, initiated into the group because the wannabes have something to prove. And if they're young kids, they've got no judgment in which to uh, in back up the decisions that they make about what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. So, I'm here tonight to share this with you. Um, this bit is no longer um, visible because uh, a unit from the city police code, I'm told, did come and talk to the property owner, and it's been covered up with a shade of gray that's going to be very, very difficult to find a spray paint that will, in this kind of weather, actually make any marks. So maybe that fella and his wife, who paid out over $500,000 for their property, will have a few days of peace. Of course, the weather's supposed to change on Friday, so maybe you can use spray paint again for that. What I would like to say to you guys is, you've got to come up with an attitude where you want to put money out for your safety personnel. 
at the end of the couple of days that resulted in this, we had a barrage, a couple of minute barrage of firecrackers that had our citizens thinking they were under gunfire. That they weren't, I assumed, because of the rhythm of the pops that I was hearing and the lack of uh, substance to them, that it wasn't gunfire, but I'm no real expert. We could get no police coverage out there late that night when that went off because, according to dispatch, all of the officers from the city of Hagerstown were involved in investigating gunfire for real on the terrace. That's the main street, the biggest street, the, uh, what do you, the, the, the wonderful street in this town. And they're experiencing gunfire. You have to do something where you want good safety officers and you're willing to fight for them and you're going to bring them in here with good salaries and you're going to let the entire planet know you're looking for good people who are experienced, who know what they're looking at when they see gang graffiti. They know how to respond to gang graffiti. They know how to respond to me and my fears about what I'm seeing because they are experienced, because they want to come into the city of Hagerstown and be part of our police department and our code. Do you know that we're down to two and a half code officers to go do inspections, to look after landlords, and to handle this? It's their responsibility to investigate this and to turn into a report and go see the homeowner about this. Two and a half people. And the half probably never gets out to code because he's out, she's out doing whatever has to do with new construction. If you want a town where your top street, your biggest residential street, is experiencing gunfire and therefore the police cannot come to answer our fears on Laurel and Potomac and uh, however else, I, I understand that West Irwin heard it as well and got terrified by it, but nobody could come. There, were no, there was no police presence that we know about because they were tied up with gunfire on the terrace. If you want that kind of town, then what you're looking at is, according to a police, um, an article that I read in the paper, big time problems because right out here, the city has been forced to give permission at the end of Salem Avenue to build an almost 500 unit <coughs> apartment complex. People are going to go out where it's new and it's modern and it's clean and graffiti wars are not as likely to occur because they're not going to be the surfaces for them like there are in our old buildings where our old garage walls are just inviting canvases. So I conclude my message this evening by begging you guys to please not think you've done such a great thing by giving the fire and the police and extension. Think of yourselves as having handed out something that's pathetic that you need to come up with, however you do it, however you manage to cut some of the big time phone answers out of your top echelon, come up with the money for your safety personnel. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next person on the list is Mr. Nate Stewart. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for uh, hearing my comments. I just want to thank you all for uh, looking over the proposed uh, Chapter 155 noise ordinance. I'd like to thank your organization and Mr. Nairn for their work on it as well. Uh, I just want to say that, our, uh, that my council, the American Foundation for Freedom and Justice, we're pleased with the way it is currently written, we're pleased. We think it, it comes to a good balance. It protects the community as well as gives uh, um, individuals their free speech rights. And so I just want to let you know that I thank you very much for your work on it. I thank you for revisiting it. And uh, we're happy with the way that it's written. If it goes through the way it's written, then you will hear from us no more. Like I said the first time I came out, if there are any major adjustments to it, um, then you may hear from council again, 
but uh, as far as the way it's written right now, we're very pleased with it. I think it's a, it's a good balance, a good fit for the city, and a good fit for anyone that wants to uh, engage in their free speech rights. So uh, I, thank, I just wanted to put that uh, out on the table and let you know that uh, I thank you for, for looking at that. I appreciate what you guys do. And um, if, uh, if this goes through the way I've seen it and, the, and, and our council has seen it, we're very happy with it and you won't hear from us again. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments, and I just want to thank staff, and uh, I know Kathy Marr, our planning director, and our legal staff, uh, legal attorneys have uh, played a major role in making those revisions. So thank you. Would anyone else like to make any comments? Yes, ma'am, please come up and state your name and address for the record. I'm, I'm Deborah Mahaffey, and I just want to concur with my, what my friend Nate had said with what you all have done with the ordinance and, and just want to concur with all that he said. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yes, sir. Please come up and state your name and address for thank the record. You. I was delayed at another meeting. I apologize, council members, mayor, mortal souls. Uh, this isn't an issue that's on tonight's agenda. Can you tell us who you are and your I'm address, John please? Benesek. I oh, probably thank still you. have the uh, tag from the Oh, other. okay. And uh, I wonder when the uh, landlords have become the enemy. I was just reading the obituary, Landlord Dies. And uh, I'm bringing this up to illustrate a point. If I may paraphrase and uh, use a little poetic license, I'd like to... Uh, say it this way. The landlord dies, uh, meets St. Peter at the Hager's pearly gates, and uh, St. Peter asks him, why are you, are you here? Do you deserve to be here? What are your job skills? And uh, let's check the dossier to see uh, where you are in line to come in. And while the most wanted list is being booted up, let's uh, just review what your qualifications <coughs> are. I see you've suffered as a landlord, and uh, I can understand that because you come from an area that's 60% uh, uh, of the housing is rental units. Hmm, makes me think that perhaps uh, your area must uh, be uh, favorable for public uh, assistance and public housing. I bet they blame that on you. Actually, I'd like to tell you, St. Peter tells him, it's uh, Big Brother's doing, not yours. But uh, you possess invaluable skills, such as taking applications, interviewing. That's something we need up here, especially at the pearly gates, because uh, down on uh, where you come from, it must be a, a very unusual introspective ability to read people's minds, see beyond their smiles and look beyond their promises when they want to have an occupancy in a rental unit. And uh, we see that you have litigation uh, skills, at least to the uh, district court level. Now, I might remind you, says St. Peter, that uh, if you go beyond 60% spent on litigation, and if you pass the bar, then you probably will uh, be in an occupation where we don't want you here. There is a place for you somewhere else. But uh, we also see that you have other skills. You have uh, the abilities to be a sanitation engineer, unclogging toilets, cleaning out empty, moldy refrigerators, even uh, wet basements, plumbing, roofing, painting, banking. Yes, soul collections. Oh, excuse me, right, let's write that off. Rent collections and uh, a financier, especially if certain individuals can't pay you. You've got to try to manipulate your budgets and schedules to uh, meet your financial obligations, mortgages, taxes, city fees, and other tithes that are incurred on your profession. 
So with all your handyman skills, you certainly have talents and knowledge that almost nobody else has. We would call you the Renaissance man. In the 15th, 16th centuries, that's what it was. Today, it's called a landlord. But uh, before you bought the farm in Washington County, it looks like you were going up for a new occupation, police work. Uh, that must have been by maintaining zero tolerance for euphoric substances and uh, requiring uh, people to be crime-free, have a crime-free environment in your community. Uh, just remember, the boss here never makes you suffer more than you can bear. No wonder you are here. You had to obey the laws, the regs, the city ordinances, and then you had to enforce them. All without the right to carry your heart on your sleeve. Yes, in reflection, no, God didn't force this on you. It sounds like the powers down there have caused you to have more than you can bear. Thank you. Well, the only thing I can say to that is based on your purported reputation, if we can create more codes that help you divest of your properties in Hagerstown, we'll be doing our job. With that, we will go to the city administrator's comments. Okay, I'd just like to take a minute to uh, also extend my appreciation to John Erner for his 16 years of service as a city attorney for Hagerstown. That's a lot of legal advice. It's a lot of legal issues, some not so easy, but he's handled them all well. He has served us very professionally and with integrity, as the proclamation mentioned. I think as staff, we've always been very appreciative of John, viewed him with a lot of confidence, and he's been very successful as our city attorney. So. I think the best thing I can say about John is I think we were a, a better city government uh, when John came on as our city attorney and definitely appreciate everything he's done. And then on a, uh, just a reminder on a less uh, significant but an important note, Christmas and New Year's changes in the refuse recycling schedule for people with uh, uh, set outs and pickups on starting on Tuesday. So Tuesday night set outs, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night next week and the week of New Year's. Those will be pushed back one day both weeks because of uh, the holiday schedule. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night set outs will be delayed one day. That's it for me. Thank you. We'll move on to mayor and council comments. I'll start over here. We'll move across alphabetically. Mr. Alshon. I, I, was, I was still digesting the comments from Mr. Benizek uh, and all of the good properties that, that he maintains in our city. Um, the first comment I have is in relation to Mount Etna. Uh, there was another article this week uh, for uh, movement on infrastructure related uh, improvements for development of that property. And I would only reiterate that uh, that movement continues to occur and we uh, continue uh, to not have a, a lot of discussion on uh, how annexation would apply uh, to that uh, property development and I would only encourage us to engage the county and those property owners uh, in that type of discussion before uh, it moves uh, too far uh, down the line and we uh, are portrayed as uh, interfering with the future development of that property. I think that the average person expects that that is the general course of events uh, that will occur. Uh, you know, the, the property will move forward with development and, and you know, will be up for consideration for annex and annexation into the city, and, and that's generally, uh, you know, how it should occur. The um, the second item is uh, another article, it was an editorial that came out <clears throat> and uh, it's in relation to our uh, ongoing uh, 
negotiations with our employee groups. Uh, this editorial today referenced uh, specifically the public safety uh, employee groups. Uh, and clearly, you know, as just one individual sitting here that has uh, worked through that process, most of which we've done in closed session and are hamstrung with our limitations of speaking about. Uh, we also heard Ms. Haynes' comments uh, a bit to that effect uh, this evening um, are not uh, completely accurate representations uh, of either those ongoing discussions uh, our approach to resolving that matter or the historical application of uh, uh, changes in wages and benefits uh, to those employee groups. And I would reiterate my comments that I sent to you guys today, which is, you know, this, the, this illusion or charade that, 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 that we are conducting um, on this matter that continues to be discussed in, in public setting uh, is only an allusion to the taxpayer that we keep that uh, discussion from, only to have uh, folks editorialize and opinionate on an issue uh, and not always provide the most uh, accurate information. The third item uh, relates to the uh, rental uh, legislation that uh, we removed from the agenda. And, um, you know, I'm certainly willing to, to have further debate on the issue, to, to listen to folks. I've certainly responded to everybody that's emailed us uh, about it. Uh, but what I'm not willing to do uh, is pretend that we don't have issues in this arena, that we don't need uh, to take additional action uh, to address uh, those issues uh, that are clearly, clearly, impacting the quality of life of our citizens, uh, both owners uh, and renters and landlords and commercial property owners and, and all of the folks that are affected um, uh, by an issue I think we can all visibly agree uh, exists. The item that I'd save for last is my comments on our city attorney, uh, Mr. Erner. Uh, I know that you are retiring. Uh, and I know that that comes with age, but I will say this, uh, no matter how old uh, you become, you will, to me, always be a man that is wise beyond his years. And I would say to your family who's here in the audience this evening, especially to your grandson, that the volume of knowledge of a person like your grandfather, uh, you take note of that, uh, especially in those arenas of quality of life uh, lessons that he may yet teach you. Thanks, Mr. Brubaker. Yes, um, I too want to uh, extend best wishes to, uh, to John Erner and his retirement, uh, both as a member of the council and as a member of the planning commission for many <coughs> years. I have uh, worked with John, indeed I've argued with John, but uh, always I think on good terms, always with his knowledge, uh, and most of all uh, as a gentleman. He, he was always a gentleman. I'm not sure I always was, but I think a lot of the time we got along well, and uh, uh, he will be missed. So and his expertise and judgment will be missed. And um, most of all, uh, I want to wish a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody out there. Thanks, Mr. Metzner. Thank you. <clears throat> what Kristen had to say about John was very accurate. Um, thought about uh, what I was going to say. It, it seems pretty simple. For those who know me uh, well enough, they will understand this. But John served with my dad on the board of First Federal many, many decades ago now, um, literally many decades ago. Uh, my father did not have the greatest love for attorneys in the world. Matter of fact, he's pretty good with attorney jokes. Um, but I can still remember coming home and having dinner with the family as we did every night. And my father had the greatest respect for John Arner of probably any lawyer I've ever known. Um, as I said, those who know me well know what that means. Uh, so when 
vacancy became open for city attorney and John offered to do this. And believe me, for the, the rates he proposed, it was his offer to provide this service. It was the probably the easiest decision I've ever had. And I just appreciate everything you've done for us, John. And with that, I also, we will not be meeting again until after Christmas, until after Kwanzaa, or at least after Kwanzaa begins, and after New Year's. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. Thanks, Mr. Munson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, John Erner and I have uh, known each other a long time. Uh, we were kids in college together uh, way back when. And, uh, all, and, and John, you're way too young to retire. Now, having said that, Thank you. I too would like to uh, discuss as many contributions to this community uh, before joining the city. John was a great attorney who did a lot of good stuff for all the citizens and uh, for his clients. And since joining the city, he's been a great attorney for the city. Um, we're a better community because John Erner has been part of us, and um, we're sad to see you go, John, and uh, we're going to miss you, and uh, all the years I've known you, you have been an outstanding gentleman. Thank you. Thank you for your many courtesies and many kindnesses, and thank you for your good work for all the citizens of Hagerstown and indeed all Washington County. Thank you. And I too would like to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody who's tuned in and listening. Thank you, Ms. Nye. John, all I can say is, is best to you and to your family because your family will now appreciate all of those things that you couldn't do when you weren't there and you were in that law office. <laughs> <laughs> and your grandkids. You even become a better grandparent. And also, happy holidays to all. Thanks, and I just want to remind folks that the Houses of Worship holiday tour is a self-guided uh, tour of Houses of Worship downtown and a couple other historic buildings. It's Thursday, December 26th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, very much looking forward to that. and. Uh, also want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and uh, be safe out there. No. And that will bring us to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of minutes. Uh -oh. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for approval of minutes presented to the Mayor and Council meetings held on November 5, 12, and 19th, all of 2013. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the approval of the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Next up is the consent agenda. Your mayor here remove the consent agenda to be approved as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, uh, I would like to note that I believe in all my years of being on the city council, this is the shortest consent agenda we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. On to unfinished business. We have one item, the adoption of an ordinance for the additional three-month extension of the Antietam Cable Television Franchise Agreement. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the attached ordinance be approved to authorize an additional three-month extension of the cable television franchise agreement with Antietam Cable Television, Inc. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries and the approval of the ordinance is Moving forward, Un let's see, this is not unfinished business, it's new business. Uh, item A, introduction of an ordinance, repeal of chapter 155 noise and replacement with new chapter 155 noise control. 
Mr. Mayor, here I move the Mayor and City Council introduce an ordinance to repeal Chapter 155 noise and replace it with new Chapter 155 noise control. This change is proposed for the following reasons. One, old Chapter 155 includes provisions which complicate enforcement of the ordinance, and two, staff need a better tool to protect the quality of life and public health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of Hagerstown from excessive noise. I couldn't. I'm sorry, who was that? Mr. Munson? I had a motion by Mr. Alshire and a second by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? Yes, yes. I just want to comment that, uh, you know, we're always trying to find a balance. We had the, the speaker saying how uh, this met their standards. Well, I don't, you know, it, it, we hear from lots of groups, and I don't think that was where we were going. We were trying to find something that was enforceable and strikes a balance, as you said, between the citizen and the quality of life of the citizen and uh, freedom of speech and other factors. Um, and we're going to be watching this. We're going to be on the alert to see how well this works and be careful that it's not abused. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I have a comment, too. I, uh, I'm willing to vote for this, but I would like to have it back on the work session. This is an introduction. And sometimes I apologize. It, it takes me a couple times of reading before I, I see some issues. But specifically, uh, Section 155-6 variances. That concerns me. It's um, uh, we're we're putting the decision on whether to basically give a variance to this law to the city clerk, as I understand it. The city clerk makes a decision and his or her sole determination of whether to grant a variance, it seems to me that's something that should go before the, the elected body, especially because under this uh, section, it requires at least 30 days prior uh, re notice for the request. So uh, even under this ordinance, it would give plenty of time for the elected body to decide. It also concerns me on 155-5, and it may be fine as it sits, but just if, if we could have council talk to us at a work session, one of the exemptions is fireworks displays. Now, I understand it says subject to the terms of approval or permits by the city of Hagerstown, but up until now, fireworks have not been exempted from our noise control. And in fact, what happens is people who want to do fireworks displays come to the mayor and council and seek permission to have fireworks displays occur. Um, you may find, I, I can see under this thing that it could be read that the terms of approval permits by the city of Hagerstown may only be with the fire marshal. The fire marshal says, you have my approval, you got my permit, and fireworks are exempted from the noise ordinance, and I, I can see there could be problems there. So I, I support the ordinance in its entirety, but I think those two things I would like us to discuss at the work session. We can do that. Any other discussion? Motion made by Mr. Alshire and seconded by Mr. Munson. All those in favor of the introduction of the ordinance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ordinance is introduced. We'll get that item back on the work session before we have our uh, final vote. Next up is the uh, approval of a resolution for the Hagerstown Ice and Sports Complex Operating Agreement. Mr. Mayor, hereby move for approval of a resolution authorizing an operating agreement with the Hagerstown Youth Hockey Association, Inc., HYHA for operation and management of the Hagerstown Ice and Sports Complex through June 30th, 2014. Condition of this approval is that once the new operating board comprised of all user groups is created and the mayor and council approve an operating agreement with the new board, the city will terminate this operating agreement with HYHA. Second. I have a motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I would uh, like to uh, in particular congratulate our city engineer, Rodney Tissue, on his efforts on this matter. This has been a very controversial and hotly deba debated, uh, at least in the back rooms, uh, item. And um, it took a person who was uh, truly dedicated to working things out to make this work out, and it has worked out to everybody's uh, satisfaction. And it's a good piece of work, and it should uh, it should guarantee the operation of the uh, 
ice rink in an efficient and effective manner for many years to come. And so congratulations to Rodney and all the people that assisted him in getting this all together. Here, here. I'll put a plug in for the Washington County Community Mediation Center. Uh, I know that people can sometimes get uh, a little skeptical or wonder what mediation is, but I appreciate all the user groups trusting the process and uh, coming to the table and, uh, and really working together to make an agreement everyone can get behind. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Metzner, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution is approved. <clears throat> Next up is the approval of a resolution accepting the offer of dedication of Kramer Alley and Bixler Alley, part of the library expansion. Mr. Mayor, hereby move to accept the offer of dedication of Kramer Alley and Bixler Alley that were recently approved as part of the library expansion. Cities shall commence maintenance of this area effective immediately. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution is approved. Next up is a approval of a license agreement for Valley Pride LLC, otherwise known as Shenandoah Family Farms. Mr. Mayor, hereby move to execute a license agreement between the City of Hagerstown and Valley Pride LLC for the installation of fencing and gates across Kenley Avenue and permission to modify <coughs> the Kenley Avenue right away adjacent their loading dock area to facilitate truck maneuvers. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries and the license agreement is approved. Next on the agenda is approval of the Community Coalition Lobbyist Funding of $5,000. Mr. Mayor, hereby move from Mayor and Council authorization of the expenditure of $5,000 from the general fund in order to con contribute toward hiring Michael Johansson with the firm Rifkin, Livingston, Leviton, and Silver as the community coalition lobbyist. Other funding partners that have provided funding in the past include Washington County, City of Hagerstown, Chamber of Commerce, Chief, Convention and v Visitors Bureau, Greater Hagerstown Committee, Washington County Public Schools, and the Washington County Free Library. I Second. I'm not certain that motion reads completely correct. But. The uh, motion made by Mr. Alshire and seconded by Mr. Mentzner. Any discussion? I don't think GHC I don't think Greater has Hagerstown has ever committed money, have they? I would amend the motion to remove that from the list of um, I'd accept that. funding partners I've identified. Yeah, yeah but they, I don't I think they I thought they're they precluded. We're saying the greater, greater Hager's I think they're agreement. precluded based on whatever. Right. It says other funding status. partners. Right. They have not. They've been partners, partners, but not funding partners. I don't partners. think they're a funding partner. I, I agree. Okay. All right. I'll take that out of your motion. Yes, I would. Okay. So the amended uh, motion, made by Mr. Alshire and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries, and the funding is approved. Next item on the agenda is approval of the Enterprise Fund Dividend Policy. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the Mayor and City Council approve a motion accepting the Enterprise Fund Dividend Transfer Policy. The revised Enterprise Fund Dividend Transfer Policy dated December 17, 2013, replaces the previously utilized Light Fund Dividend Transfer Policy, Community Betterment Dividend Policy, and the Water Division Dividend Transfer. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson and seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Policy is approved. Next up is the approval of the Ask me local 3373 contract extension to March 31st, 2014. Mr. Mayor, I move for the Mayor Council approval of a three month extension of the collective bargaining agreement between the City of Hagerstown and the American Federation of State County and Municipal Employees Local 
Number 3373, the collective bargaining agreement shall remain in effect until 2400 hours on Monday, March 31, 2014. This extension does not preclude a settlement or ratification of a new contract prior to that date. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? I would have only liked to have seen it go for six months. I'm not going to vote against it, but I think that six months would have been better. <clears throat> Any other discussion? I, I would have liked to have seen it uh, uh, end under the current time frame we're in, but again, I won't, as Penny, vote against it uh, if we can accomplish it with this within the next three months. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries and the contract is extended. Last item under new business, the approval of the IAFF Local 1605 contract extension through June 30, 2014. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval of a six-month extension of the collective, bar collective bargaining agreement between the City of Hagerstown and the International Association of Firefighters Local 1605. The collective bargaining agreement shall remain in effect until 2400 hours on Monday, June 30, 2014. This extension does not preclude a settlement or ratification of a new contract prior to June 30th, 2014. Second. <coughs> Motion made by Ms. Nye and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries and the contract is extended. That ends our work for this year of 2013. Be safe out there. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Have a good night. We are adjourned. Good job.